Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Yeah, well, howdy, partners. Here we are out in the range. Yeah, the range, that's the domain of the cowboy and the cow. Maybe a couple of dogs, coyote hidden out there somewhere. And the function of these folks is to roam the range and get those cattle to the market. And it, wait, wait, my phone's ringing. Hold on a second. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. We'll get. We'll get. All right. I'm sorry. It'll never happen again. Uh. Hi. Hey. Um. That was your mother. She says we're supposed to be doing math, not talking about cowboys. So I guess we'll move on and do some math, and we'll talk about domain, range, and function. Get along, little doggies. Move out of here. We got to do some math, and we're going to start our math by talking about a function. A function is a type of equation, and you've been dealing with equations now for a long time. y plus 2x equals 6 is an equation. But it's not a function, because a function is a type of equation where we're solving for y. y equals something. Now we can change this equation to a function real easily. All we have to do is subtract 2x from both sides of the equation, and we'll get y equals 6 minus 2x. And that's a function because we're solving for y. Now, a function is kind of like a machine. It's kind of like a meat grinder. This function meat grinder we got here is the y equals 6 minus 2x meat grinder. And this function kind of works like a machine. You put something in at this end, and something else comes out at this end. What do you put in at this end? Well, you put in the x value. You input the x value. And those x values that you input, the whole range of those x values that you input, is called the domain. Now we put that x value, we input it into the machine, and the machine turns it around and converts it to y equals 6 minus 2x. And out the other end, we get the output, or the y value. And the whole set of potential y values is called the range. The domain is all the possible input values, all the possible values of x that you could put into the function. And the range is the set of all possible output values. It's the set of all the potential values of y. Well, let's try one. Let's say we had an equation x plus 2y equals $8. Now, that's an equation, but it's not a function. So the first thing we need to do is to turn that into a function. And a function is going to read y equals something. So we'd have to manipulate that equation till we got it to read y equals, and in this case, y equals 4 minus 0.5x. Now, there's a range of x values and y values that would satisfy that equation. And we could create a chart of x values and y values to satisfy that equation. And we're going to start with the x value. The x value is the input value. It's the number you put into the function to get y. y is the output value. So we'll put in the x values first. And let's go 0 to 8. And then for each of those x values, we'll calculate a y value. For instance, if x is 0, 0.5 times 0 is 0, so y equals 4. And if x were 1, 1 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, 4 minus 0 0.5 is 3 and a half, and so on until we had a complete set of x values and y values. Now all those x values are what we call 
the domain. The x values that we put into a function are known as the domain. And the y values that come out of the function are known as the range. If we were to graph the data that we put in this chart, it would look just like this. And the range would be from the lowest y value to the highest y value, which in this case is 0 to 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the domain would be from the lowest x value to the highest x value. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, we've got the same function here and the same domain and the same range, but let's make it a little less abstract. Let's give x and y some tangible values. Let's say that x is a can of tomatoes and y is a can of potatoes. And what this equation is saying, if we look at the first part of the equation, is the number of cans of tomatoes you buy plus two times the number of cans of potatoes you buy equals eight dollars. And what that really means is you got eight dollars to spend and cans of potatoes are two dollars each and cans of tomatoes are one dollar each. So one dollar times the number of cans of tomatoes you buy plus two dollars times the number of cans of uh, potatoes you buy has to equal eight dollars because that's all you've got. And we can rewrite that equation like that. Y equals four dollars minus 0 0.5 times the number of cans of tomatoes you buy. Now with that background I think maybe you can understand a little bit more about the main and range if we try an example. And here's the example. Is 950 in the domain? Is 9.5, 9.5 in the domain? Well, we can look over here at the chart we created and you will remember that the domain are the x values. And we don't see 9.5 among those x values, so we can say no. 9.5 is not in the domain. But let's explore it a little further and maybe you'll understand what sense that makes. If we used a value of 9.5 for x, if we substituted 9.5 for that x, we'd write, rewrite this equation this way. y equals $4 minus 0 0.5 times 9.5. And then when we carried out the math, we get y equals $4 minus $4.75, and we get y equals minus 0.75. And that doesn't make a lot of sense. First of all, I doubt they're going to sell you three quarters of a can of diced potatoes. Plus, it's minus 0.75. So theoretically, you're giving them three quarters of a can of diced tomatoes and taking tomatoes for it. And there aren't too many places you can do that. So I hope you see that domain and range are not just arbitrary. There can be some reality behind them. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. What's the domain and the range of the function shown on this graph? Well, you remember domain is the x values. And you can see we've got a point right there and its x value is 1. And we've got a point there and its x value is 2 and there's one for three and they go all the way down to an x value of nine. So our domain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now what's our range? Well each of those points has a y value. This one has a y value of four. This one has a y value of four and a half. This one as a y value of 5, and so forth. So our range is 4, 4.5, four 5, 5.5, five 6, 6.5, six 7, 7.5, seven and, and 8.
I just love tomato and potato jokes and stories, so we're going to do another one. In this problem, the number of cans of tomatoes, which we'll call X, and the number of cans of potatoes, which we'll call Y, that you can buy for $20 is represented by the equation 4Y plus 2X equals $20. Write the equation in function form and then create a table showing the domain and range. Well, here's our equation, 4y plus 2x equals $20. And again, to make it less abstract, let's think about what that might mean. What that probably means is I've got $20 to spend, and I want to buy some cans of tomatoes, and I want to buy some number of cans of potatoes. And the tomatoes are $2 a can, so the amount I spend on tomatoes will be $2 times the number of cans, and the potatoes are $4 a can, so what I spend on potatoes will be $4 times the number of cans. Now, this equation is not in function form, so I've got to convert it to function form, which I can do algebraically, and I come up with y equals $5 minus 0.5x. Now, remember x is my independent variable. It's my input value. It's what I put into the function and what comes out of the function is the y value. The y value is dependent upon what x value I put in. So I put the x value in first and then solve for the y. And if I create a chart, I want to put the x values in first. And let's put in 0 to 10 as x values. Now for each of those x values, I plug that into the function and I come up with y. If I plug 0 in, I got 0 0.5 times 0, which is 0, so y is going to equal 5. If I plug a 1 in, I get, point, I get 5 minus 0 0.5, or 4.5. And I do that for the rest of those, in, those input values, and I come up with a chart that shows for each x the corresponding y. And those y values are known as the range, and the x values are known as the domain. So the domain is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and the range is 5, 4.5, 4, 3.5, 3, 2.5, 2, 1.5, 1, 1.5, and 0. You may have asked yourself, how did I come up with these numbers to plug in for the, uh, the domain, for the x values? And it's really not that hard. In this kind of a problem where we're buying cans of tomatoes and cans of potatoes, I can't buy less than zero cans of tomatoes. I probably can't buy negative one cans of tomatoes. So I'm going to start with zero. And what's the maximum number of cans I can buy? Well, I can only spend $20, and the tomatoes are $2 a can. So if I bought 10 cans, I'd have spent all my $20. I couldn't buy 11 cans, because that would be more than $20. So I create my range from the lowest number I could buy up to the highest number I can buy, and then I fill in the numbers in between. And I fill them in in whole numbers because, again, I can't buy a half a can of tomatoes. But wait! Can I buy a four and a half cans of potatoes? Probably not. I should probably take that out of my range. And how about three and a half cans of tomatoes? Can I buy three and a half cans of tomatoes? Nope. And how about two and a half, one and a half, or one half? Nope. So, now my domain is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, and my range is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Well, partner, we've been roaming the math range, talking about the domain and the range and the function, and now it's time to see if you get it. So go to www.mastermath.info and download the domain and range of a function worksheet and try your luck there. And then go back and try the quiz on domain and range of a function. 
And you all mosey on back to mastermath.info real soon. Okay?